Madam President and uh, dear colleagues, let me allow, please allow me to provide some background and context for this issue that I've brought before you. It's unprecedented in many ways, and in, in many ways it isn't. This is an, an effort to maintain affordability for some 120 low-income, predominantly Chinese, Filipino, and Latino tenants in my district. It should be noted, as in it is a matter of record, that previously that I had negotiated in good faith with the owner of the building. And this is, in many respects, why there is the type of animus that we hear today and why there is that lack of trust that we hear today is because we negotiated in good faith an agreement to extend these covenants that included no rent increases, that included no evictions, that included no displacements. And in exchange for that, we were going to forgive the CRA loans that were made to the owner some 30 years ago to construct this building. And so it was a good faith agreement and there was this exchange. Mr. Wesson, you were the president at the time when I brought this forward. I announced it. We were excited. It was in the news. It was uh, something that we were relieved because it would give us 10 years to figure out a broader strategy. This would not be a one-off, but actually the beginning of a process for which we could figure out how to deal with 10,000 expiring covenants. This was a good beginning. This was a good opportunity for, for us to have the space to do that. I had, in the past, negotiated many agreements, as you know, negotiating with your boss, in fact, uh, in the past. And so we were very pleased with the exchange. Unfortunately, and as I said, the cause for much of the animus and the distrust is that the owner reneged on the agreement. And that is a matter of fact. We had an agreement, we announced it, it was in writing, we were preparing the documents for signature, and then the owner reneged. And so we are here. From that point forward, my office has pursued the various procedures that are involved uh, to prepare for eminent domain. As I've learned from my uh, friend and colleague, Larry Gross, we cannot build ourselves out of this housing crisis. We cannot build ourselves out of this affordability housing crisis. Yes, we must build, but if we do not preserve, we will not go forward. And so 10,000 units are at risk. And so we have sought a whole range of strategies and tactics to protect those 10,000 units. First, we had an independent third party conduct an appraisal for the fair market value, and it was valued at 45695000 Second, we introduced a motion that sought the funds to be placed in escrow in order to make an offer for the purchase and acquisition of the property. A reserve fund loan was identified as a source of funding that could be used. A loan, I note. A motion was heard in finance and budget where council members of the committee had questions and requested a report back from the housing department. And that has brought us here. But before we got here, I want to note that this body and all of you engaged in the process of trying to protect this housing. No less than six motions were filed beginning in May of 2019. Thank you, Mr. Wesson. Beginning in July of 2019. Thank you, Mr. Wesson. 
in January of 20, 13120. Thank you, Mr. De Leon. In November 24th, 20, thank you, Mr. Lee. And December 8th, 1920, thank you, Mr. Buscaino. And May 20th, 1921, thank you again. 2021, thank you, Mr. De Leon. All of you have been aware of what we are trying to do knowing that this is unprecedented, knowing that this is in the area of preserving affordable housing, there is no other city doing what we are doing. Not in the county, not in the state, nor in the nation. And so I thank all of you for being open, having the courage, being willing to take these risks. In our preparations to engage Mr. Botts, we brought the finest that we have from the city attorney. Noreen Vincent, Vincent, who I've known for many years, thank you for your leadership, particularly uh, Zakia, or known as Zaki. Thank you for your thoughtfulness and your preparation, making sure that we were positioned to make sure that what we do is not just the right thing to do, it's obviously the moral thing to do, but it's also legally sound, that it's constitutional that what we're doing uh, will, will withstand the challenges that will no doubt come. And you've put, positioned us in, in that place. And so, General Manager of Housing, thank you for your leadership. Uh, thank you particularly for Daniel Hoon and Tim Elliott, who were there with us as we negotiated the agreement and crunched out the numbers and did all that they could. The entire intellectual and governance weight of this body has been placed to bear for these 124 units. I want to thank the vision and the leadership of Doug Guthrie, the CEO of HACLA, for willing to collaborate. It's not often that you have this intergovernmental collaboration, but working, working with Doug Guthrie, we have an opportunity Madam uh, President, thank you for your patience. I remember in the Senate, I, all, I would always ask when I was chair, do you want to give a speech or do you want to win a legislative movement here? Well, so I'll tell you right now, I want to vote. People have choices. <laughs> I want to thank my team, uh, Ricardo Flores, Hugo Ortiz, Tony de Casa for them and their work and their efforts. Now what's here before us is a report from the department with a recommendation simply to initiate the process towards the acquisition. This is part of the very extensive process of eminent domain. Eminent domain is a, a demand that uh, requires an extraordinary process. And so uh, we have been moving that process forward and this is another major step, a major step in the acquisition of this building. And the first step of strategies to preserve affordable housing for the city. It preserves at-risk affordable housing it is key to our overall strategy. It will require us to work with Sacramento, and I want to thank uh, my assembly men member, Wendy Carillo, who has been working diligently uh, for this in Sacramento. Working with HACLA, I should note that we recently purchased the building in which we are moving. Many of those who are in MacArthur Park will now have a spectacular brand new building to move into. And we've been advocating and formulating the strategy for some time now. These extensions of covenants can be done. They must be done. And with your vote, they will be done. Thank you. 
Today, uh, colleagues, I want you to know that I am so appreciative of your patience. I know I have tested it over the years, Mr. Wesson, Madam President, all of you, and the entire city family, I know have pushed you to do some things that are not usual and without precedent. Mr. Cedillo, please continue. As you know, Madam Chair, so I thank you for, for all of you for uh, stepping forward, leaning in, providing the leadership. It is unprecedented, but we do it for airports, we do it for stadiums, we do it for major public works projects. And so now is the time for us to move forward and to do it as part of an overall strategy to protect affordable housing. Now is the time for us to make true this promise of democracy. Now is the time I ask you, my colleagues, to ask and cast an eye vote to preserve this housing, to begin the process to obtain that building and to ensure affordable housing will be preserved in my district and throughout this city. I ask for an eye vote. Okay, say no members on the queue. Members, just prepare to vote on item number 12 as amended. So, and clerk, please open the roll. For the record, Madam President, mm -hmm. the matter before council is a motion by Cedillo Wesson to adopt the Los Angeles Housing Department dated May 9th, 2022, which are the recommendations delineated as item B on the council agenda. Okay, let's go ahead and prepare to vote on item number 12 as amended. Open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. <laughs> 